Okay, guys, so sorry about that. Um, I didn't realize my computer wasn't plugged in, and I just completely ran out of batteries. So what was going to be a one-part lesson is now a two-part lesson. And I am hoping to be able to, because I did not disconnect properly, just load right back on and be where we were. But again, another opportunity to tell you guys how important it is to save. Okay, good. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. happens again, I'll be okay. So um, we're going to just pick right up again. Uh, now in this uh, second part will be fairly short. Uh, we're going to make this armhole curve. And as I was saying, uh, you want to start here at the low point shoulder, kind of curve in, hit this chest point, and then curve back out and hit this line uh, far enough along to still keep that armpit point nice and square. So I do want to go ahead and draft this first just because uh, it is a little bit more complex. So I'm going to start here and come down along the way to that point. Here, this point, I am going to curve. Now, I definitely have to adjust that before I cut. That is looking really wonky. And just a few more curve points. And I'm just going to do my last one. And sure, why not? right click finish drafting um now let's see what the heck is going on here I'm gonna grab my move point tool maybe I can I want this to come oh I think I know what I can do I'm gonna start just to there we go to blend that out a little bit now maybe I want to make that one a curve point too Hmm. I might want to put one more point in here because I don't really want it to go too far past this line. A little bit is fine, but not too much. Actually, that might be fine. It's really not going that far. I'm going to come down here. Yeah, that's actually okay. As long as you get that nice sort of curve and it's not really going too far. If I did want to try to move it in a little bit more, just I guess for sake, I can place a point here and then I, I can use that point to move it in and just sort of boop, move it in. Ah, that I, looks even better. Um, a little straight there, but once we cut, we can always adjust the roundness as well. So why don't we go to cutting? So now that I have everything um, planned out, actually a little bit closer in, let's go ahead and cut this all out. So I'm going to grab my cut piece tool. I'm going to start over here and go along all the points that I made. And go one further along here, because we don't need this anymore either. Go all the way to the high point shoulder. And okay, keep it at no seam, because again, just like the skirt, we're not going to put a seam allowance on this. And delete. Now, there might be a little bit of wiggling messiness down here, so let's clean it up a little bit and maybe round it out so it's not quite so flat. Um, in fact, I think it's better to go in a little bit than it is to have it quite so flat flat right there. You want the whole thing to be a nice kind of round curve. So I'm just going to delete some of the extraneous points that I don't need that were created when I drafted and then cut, which can happen. It's just nice to keep things clean. Grab my move point tool. And let's... There we go. Again, very, very small but overall making it a nice curve point. 
Okay, like I said, we're almost there. So what we want to do from here is uh, create the way uh, this right here. So before I cut anything else off, I want to attach this sort of extended side seam. So let's zoom in on there. And again, we're going to use that same build piece tool. And I want this, everything, every little bit. So it might be, oops, let me zoom in a little bit closer then. I want to get all the different parts. And again, it might be separated because it, it, it registers every line that you make. So it's trying to use those lines to see what you want. So we're just going to make sure that everything we want is highlighted green. Then we right click, finish drafting, and join it up. Actually, let me move it out a little bit first so it'll be easier to join. And there we are. Okay, so very good. We're very close. All we got to do is uh, uh, fix up the waistline a little bit and add the dart. So what we're going to do to do that is we're going to go ahead and figure out what the dart width should be. And then look, taking a look at the okay, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of math to figure out um, our dart width. So it's saying that we need to take our waist arc, and so this was very similar when we figured out the dart uh, placements and measurements for the skirt. So first we need the total waist arc for the front, so let's find it out. Waist arc, front, is 6 and 7 eighths. Now we want to add a quarter inch ease to that, so we're going to end up with 7 and 1 eighth. for our total waist arc. Now what I want to do is um, I want to figure out what the total thing is and the difference between that waist arc and what we have is going to be our dart intake. So let's zoom in on our waist and let's try to fix it up a little bit first. Um, it will be um, easier if we do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this point or this sort of triangle right here. Okay. So I'm going to grab my cut piece tool and I'm going to cut from here to here. And again, I'm just going to try to make sure that I'm doing it very neatly along that line. Delete the excess. And I want to just clean this up a little bit. So all I really need to do, remember we drop this down here. All I need to do is delete that point. See, now we have this nice little thing here. And I can delete this little point in line too as well. We don't need it anymore. In fact, you can go ahead and delete a lot of these little things right here. You don't need this. You don't need, I mean, you can keep that there if you want. Um, sometimes it's nice to keep some of them. I definitely like to keep, um, this line as a nice indication for your bust line um, but the rest of these guys you know you can really take away a lot of these guidelines you don't need this but we'll do that in sort of a final wrap up okay so what I want to do is I want to determine the t entire length from here to here so what I'm going to do is remember we have to work clockwise I'm going to go ahead and click this first point that I'm working with hold down the shift key and click the last point. And that's going to select everything along these uh, segments in between those two points. 
Now, because it's not just a straight line measurement, I can't use the ruler. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go to design segment length, and it's going to tell me that that entire length is 11.43 inches. And I'm going to say, great. So now what I want to do is I'm going to grab my little calculator, and I'm going to take that 11 0.43 inches and I'm going to subtract what the waist should be which is 7 and 1 eighth and I get 4.3 inches and that is what is going to be our dart now you might say, wow, that's a lot bigger than the darts on uh, the skirt. And yes, well, we typically have a lot more fullness to um, go around, and it's a lot sharper fullness. So if you think about uh, the bust as compared to, to the butt, the butt's sort of a little bit bigger, rounder. It's not so isolated in fullness, uh, but the bust itself goes, you know, from the waist to the bust is, is a very dramatic difference. And that is what's causing the dart to be so big, okay? So let's put in um, our uh, uh, dart width and then add in our um, dart, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do Sorry, just looking at the, making sure I'm not missing anything. Um, all these little extraneous points, I'm gonna delete them because we don't need them. And also they may get in the way of my measuring. So I want this point. Remember that's still our dart, our original dart placement point. So I wanna keep that. And now I want to do is I want to put in that dart intake here. So I'm going to put in a point. And again, if it looks wonky, I want to make sure that that point that I'm measuring for it is grading. But I think it is. So this distance, remember this is going to be my previous point. That's right. Four point three, and I'm going to make it grading. And then there is my dart intake. So um, just to double check, I'm going to, with my measurements here, okay, there's my 3 eighths. So this should be about, remember our waist arc was 7 and 1 eighths. So this should be looking to be about 4 inches. Hey, pretty good. So there's our dart intake. Okay, so let's wrap this thing up and uh, go ahead and put in our dart. Now what I want to do, now it drops that second dart point a bit, but um, I'm wondering if how necessary that's going to be. Oh, let's just do it by the book. I'm trying to skip a step. But when you skip steps, it's never good. So what we're going to do um, to figure out how much we're going to drop this is we're going to make our first dart leg. And our first dart leg is going to be to this second point, not to this one where it intersects here, but to this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draft a line from here to here. And again, I don't need to measure because it's just point to point. Once I've done it, I can finish drafting. And what I want to do is now measure that distance. So, 7.64, that's how long my dart leg should be. So in order to make them even, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the line that comes through here is also going to be that same length. So let's zoom in and do it. Grab my dart draft tool, start from here. I'm going to pass through 15 
hold alt and my total distance again six four and I want to keep on that line because I do want it to pass through that one point and I'm just going to hit OK and then I'm going to go one step further just to blend it back in to the waist and right click finish drafting and let's go ahead and build that out you guys know how to do that by now right with your build piece tool oops not quite enough and we'll join it up And you don't have to worry too much about um, matching up here. Now we can we, we can make it match up pretty easily. Why not? Why not? By just deleting this point. So you just push that out just a little bit. Okay. So now let's finish it up. We really are done. We really are to the home stretch. So what I want to do is just to make it a little bit more visually appealing is I'm going to go to view and delete all my guidelines. I don't need them anymore, so it gives me a little bit of a cleaner workspace. I don't need to square anything off anymore, so I'm gonna get rid of that little piece. And there's our front sloper. Now we can leave our dart like this, all the way up here, which might be good, but let's go ahead and put in the dart um, properly with the dart tool. Now, what the sloper would like you to do in the book, now I am going to go away from the book from this, the sloper is asking you to make a dart that is 5 8 inch away from your apex. So what we would do is we would square a little line down, make that measurement, that 5 8 inch measurement, and then make the dart tip only come to there. Okay. However, because this is a sloper, I want to keep it at the bust point. This is gonna make it easier for us to do things like uh, do dart rotations. I know you don't know what that is yet, but that's a, it's a dart manipulation technique that we're gonna use for the uh, bodice. And uh, it's gonna be easier for us to make seam manipulations and things like that. Just remember when you are finishing a pattern, because remember this is a sloper, it's not meant to be a finished pattern. It's simply just meant to be a guide to further manipulate into other patterns. It's not meant to be a finished pattern. Um, but when you do make finished patterns, that you should avoid making your dart come all the way to that apex point. And you should keep it at least a half an inch, five eighths inch away from that apex. Or else you kind of get this weird sort of pointy nipple thing going on. Um, that might be something that you want. So in that case, do make it come to the apex. But for the most uh, for the most, we want that fullness to kind of be round and soft around the bust, so we move it slightly away from um, our apex, so we don't get that weird sort of pointy thing. But we can keep it like this, um, and we can put in the dart, if we want a proper dart in there, one, two, and we have everything measured out, so it it's, shouldn't be difficult at all, it's just a one, two, three, uh, click the width points first, and the final one, uh, that final uh, depth point last and of course with all the joining we kind of got a little astray with our um, baseline so let's correct it let's put a new one there we go oh we lost the name and everything so let's name it bodice I'm just gonna name it shirt but it doesn't really matter front bodice sloper so we know it's a sloper and of course uh, I need to correct the grain line so I'm going to go to set baseline direction keyboard shortcut backslash and go up along our center front because it should of course align with our center front now again I don't need seam allowance um, like with the 
skirt sloper because again this is a sloper it's not meant as a finished pattern so again we are going to have fewer amounts of pattern information on that we're not going to have our cutting information but I do want a sort of style number um, to keep my pieces together uh, and, and most importantly I want the size because the size is of course very important so size 8 I could just leave it at size 8 I forget what I did as a style now I think I just did skirt sloper as the style number for the other one so um, you can just call it bodice sloper okay so that's done um, I promise that the back is a little bit easier uh, it is a, it was a little bit more complicated than the skirt and that's why we do it next after the skirt um, but once it's done you're done and actually the manipulating is a lot easier so hopefully you didn't have too difficult a time with it um, and I'll be back in the next video to show you how to do the back so let's for sure save this and I'll see you then